We're also praying on behalf of Brother John Lee Carson and family, Sister Dorothy Lofton, and also Sister Margaret Belton, Sister Edie Parker and the Marx family. We're praying on behalf of Sister Ida B. Rockwell, Brother Eugene Williams, and Sister Tony, Tony Germany. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Ethel Gary, Sister Tarina Josie and family, Brother Ron Thrower and family, Brother Keith L. Carson and family, Brother Frank Davis, Mr. Robert Bryant, and we're also praying on behalf of Mrs. Jones, Sister Brianna Shands, and we're praying also on behalf of Al and Wendy Cummins and Norma Coker, Dave and Sadie Abraham, Sister Mary and S. Harrison, Sister Gwen Murray, and the Bellamy family. We're also praying on behalf of Dolly, Michael, and Kip Andrews. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Marilyn Pauly and family. Sister Shantae Wilson, uh, Ronald and Francis, Sister Hannah Mae Parker. We're also praying on behalf of Mrs. Anna L. Moore, Mr. Daylord Kelly and family. We're praying on behalf of Sister Crystal Ewell and Marva Dykus, Sister Maddie Williams, uh, Malachi Ewell, Amber and Amali, Antoinette and Alex. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Betty Lou Wright and Sister Mary Jo A. H. Carson. Sister Yvonne Johnson, Sister Patricia Benjamin. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Lucille Cox and Dr. Stephanie Pinnell Phillips and family. Also, Ms. Nicole Mosley, Sister Davina Watson. We're also praying on behalf of Mary Johnson and Sister Thelma Harris, Trey Stewart, Joe Jackson Sr. and Joe Jackson Jr. We're also praying on behalf of Sister Idell Hearns and Mr. Woodrow Russell. Pearl Evans, Sister Grace Ewell, Zenny Champion, and Brother Isadora Davis. We're also praying on behalf of Teresa Bozeman and Linda Green and family, Sister Edwina. And we're also praying on behalf of Sister Matilda Dunn, Sister Annie Riley and family, Sister Shirley Bennell, uh, Mr. Juan Fernando, Mr. Enrique Vallejo, and also Sister Teresa Monzo, Sister O'Dear. We're also praying on behalf of Mr. Eddie Langford and family, Charles and Yolanda Stewart. We're praying on behalf of Moselle Lester, uh, Yvonne Hutchings French, and also Sister Ruby Clifton, Brother Hawkins, Brother Adams, Sister Regina Gilmore, Freddie and Sister Mims, Sister Skurlock, and also Edward Kelly and the Flowers family. Sister Annie B. Riley, or excuse me, that's Annie B. McGowan, and also Cynthia Blackshire, John and Monique Deary, Damon and Darnell Timms, Sister Ruthie Blackshire, family and friends, Sister Nikki St. Clair, Ryan and Natasha. We're also praying on behalf of Roy and Carmen, Sister Patricia Roach, and also Sister Pearl Clay, Sister Connie Devac, Miss Robin Cook, Sister Hazel Brown, Deborah Wade and also Charles and Devon A. Stewart. We're also praying on behalf of Melody Parker, Sister Cynthia Baumgartner, and Mr. Morris Jackson, Sister Della Gupton, and also Sister Gwen Fike, Sister Wanda McCree and family, Sister Nelda O'Neill, Miss Alice Richardson, Mr. Arthur Polk, and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Trisolina Smith, Sister Ruby Richardson. Mr. Eddie Langford Sr., and we're also praying on behalf of Sister Betty Hill, and we're praying on behalf of Mr. Carol Thornton, and also Deacon Sam Richardson. And those are the names that we have on the prayer list at this time. And I would like to thank the uh, congregation for lifting up their voice as they sang for us in the background, Sweet Hour of Prayer. And when you go to God and pray, if you don't remember the names of those that are on the list, that's all right. If you would simply be kind enough to utter in your prayers those on the gospel truth prayers that will be sufficient because God knows who they are. Tonight we're going to be listening to the Crusade a cappella chorus, and they're going to be singing for us tonight. I'm glad trouble doesn't last always. I'm so glad, so glad. I tell you that I'm so glad. Trouble don't last always. I know it don't last always. I'm so glad, so glad. I tell you that I'm so glad. Trouble don't last always. I know it don't last always. I'm so glad, so glad, glad. I'm so glad. Trouble don't last always. I know it don't last always. Bum bum bum. 
to uh, invite your attention to uh, the book of Luke. And in Luke, the 17th chapter, uh, in verse number 26, we will hear the words of Jesus and then we will talk about our subject. The Bible says in verse number 26 of Luke, the 17th chapter, he says, but, and, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Now, tonight, we want to look at what the Bible says in view of the days of Noah. Now, we must understand that people were concerned about the second coming of Jesus. And as such, they had questions. And even today, that question looms in the minds of us who happen to be Christians and we're just concerned about when Jesus is going to come back. Well, we know that he is coming back because he promised us that he would and we know that he is faithful to his word and we find in the book of John the 14th chapter that he stated, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, you believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many mansions and if it weren't so, I would have told you. He says, I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Now, we need to know that individuals were concerned about when Jesus was going to be coming back. And then, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. And so we come to grips this evening with the fact that Jesus makes a parallel comparison to how things were in the day of Noah and how it will be just prior to his return. All right? So first of all, let us look at how it was then. So of course, I'm going to invite you back to the Old Testament in the uh, book of Genesis, the sixth chapter. And what we will find, uh, much like the situation is in our modern day society. First of all, in the days of Noah, there was a spiritual decline. In other words, from the time that God had created man and had issued him some commands, things began to decline. People were not serving and worshiping the Lord as they should. And that is the same situation that we are facing today, that there is a spiritual decline. And we can find in our congregations where uh, numbers are dwindling, in our Bible classes, the numbers are dwindling. And not just here, but it happens all over. And I was in a dialogue with a brother not too long ago, and he was telling me about the various churches that he had attended and, and how that there were just a few. So tonight what we want to look at is the fact that there was a spiritual decline. If you will, the book is Genesis, the sixth chapter, and the verse is number five. And this Bible says this, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man of the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So what are we looking at here is how things were in the days of Noah. The Bible says things were evil. Man was evil and the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. All right? And God saw the wickedness of man and that it was great in all the earth. And we can look at the wickedness of man today. We can look at how man has perverted his nature. The Bible says at one point we'll get to that. As it was in the day of Noah, they were given in marriage and marriage and doing all sorts of things. And we see what they're doing with marriage today. All right, so we need to keep in mind that there was a spiritual decline. So we know that man has spiritually declined today. And if we just take a look right now, I think the latest example is over there in Nairobi, Kenya, where uh, armed soldiers are or rebels have taken hostage and taken over a 
uh, a mall where people go and shop and they're killing people, all right? We see that there's violence in Afghanistan and our folk are continuing to lose their lives on that front. And then we can also look at Syria and how that even the Syrian government has uh, aimed its weapons at its own people. And so we can see that today the comparison is much like that that God saw. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Now. I don't want to cut us out. USA. We, we just saw some killings down there in Washington, D.C. at the naval base, okay? And, and we can see uh, as a result of uh, those kind of things what's happening in Chicago where kids, innocent. See, Satan is running amok and he has no respect for anybody. Babies are just as good to be killed by him as an old person are capable of being killed by Satan. And, and then we can look at Egypt and the violence that is there and Iraq. So we see that as it was in the day of Noah, it is today. And so what we find is that Jesus says, as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be just as the, prep, the Son of Man is prepared to make his return. So maybe you might understand what I mean when I say it's later than you think. All right? Because we need to take into consideration that one day the Lord's coming back. I'll tell you this. No, I can't tell you when. I'm not that arrogant, nor am I that presumptuous. But I'll tell you this. We're closer tonight than we were this time last week. So let's keep that in mind. So again, we look at the wickedness of man during that day and time. The Bible lets us know in Genesis the fourth chapter in the verses number 19. What we find there is that there was a, a shameless depravity. And, and that's about wickedness and corruption. And what had happened, God initially made one woman for one man. And then the Bible says, and Lamech took unto him two wives, and the names of one was uh, Ada, and the other one was Zara. All right? So let's look at uh, verse number five of the sixth chapter again. The Bible again says, uh, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And we hear all the uh, horror stories about people going on the internet and people getting caught up and, and going out and becoming victims of individuals who are on the internet. Now, of course, they didn't have the internet back there in, in Noah's day, but we have it today. And it is another tool for Satan to do his work. All right? So, as it was in the day of Noah, that's the lesson tonight. And then we see that there was a little devotion. All right? This is as there is today. Uh, even in our midst right now, we see that there are few, but we understand that it only takes a few. Jesus says, where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst also. So we see there was some devotion. Genesis, the sixth chapter, and the verse number eight, the Bible says, but God, or rather, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So there was one person still going about trying to encourage people, I guess I would call him an itinerant preacher, who was going around trying to tell people that you know you need to give some honor to God, you need to have faith in God. Well, this man found favor in the eyes of the Lord. All right? And so in view of that, uh, verse number 9 says, uh, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Now sometimes folks want to say, well, nobody's perfect. Well, this lets you know that people can be. Noah was perfect. Not only was Noah perfect, the Bible says Job was a man who was upright. He feared God and he was perfect in the sight of God. So don't rationalize, well, I'm human, so I, I just can't be perfect. Well, the Bible lets us see that there were just ordinary men who were perfect, all right? So there was some devotion uh, as a result of Noah trying to do right, all right? And then we look at Genesis, the sixth chapter, and verse number seven. The Bible says, and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, 
and the creeping thing and the fowl of the air, for it repented me that I had made them. God was upset, all right, and disgusted. And you know what? I'm just a mortal man. But when I just see things happening, I can imagine what it must be like to God because I find myself being disgusted with how man is conducting himself on the face of the earth. Remember, it's later than you think. And so as it was in the day of Noah, we need to understand that there's going to be a sudden destruction. Verse, uh, 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 chapter 7 and verse number 11, the Bible says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month of the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And it began to rain. And they say that Noah was preaching. And he said he only had one sermon. And his sermon was, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, it's going to rain. And it began to rain. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. The Bible says all of the inhabitants of the earth and those that were in the mountains, everything was killed except those that were in the ark. So as we make the analogy, Jesus established one church for all of us to get into. And then when the Lord comes back, he's coming back to save those that are in his church. So as it was in the day of Noah, we need to understand that our world is in bad shape today. And it's getting closer to the end, the Lord's return. By faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, you can be added to the Lord's body, which is his church. And then if you live a faithful life, you will be able to hear the master in the last day say unto you, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on up here now, and I'm going to make you ruler over many. The gospel truth is inviting you to join us again next week if it's God's will. When the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. Until then, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.